I am curious, is happiness really like a burrito like it is for this character? Have you ever found happiness in food in, in, at any time? I find only happiness in food. Like I'm, <laughs> really weirdly, I flew back from, had to go and do some pre-production stuff on the next movie I'm doing. So I've been in London for five days. I got back to LA last night and I landed at 6.30 at night and I text my wife, straight away when I got in the car saying I need Mexican food <laughs> like I just had it you know when you get something in your head that that's the only thing that will satisfy you so um I I actually didn't have any burrito last night but I had like <laughs> tacos last night um so and I was definitely in a happy place when I when I got home because the postmates like it arrived as my car got back from the airport it arrived literally at the same time so I didn't even have to wait for the food it was it was amazing for me, it usually involves dark chocolate, but I completely understand. So, <laughs> well, I, I'm curious. I mean, when this came your way, how much were you actually told? Did you get to read all of the scripts? Did you have to wait to read some of them? Because I, I, I think these writers are great. I've seen a lot of their stuff, but their stories are always kind of insane. Yeah, they're always mad and they're always very hard to predict. Um, and I, too, have been keeping a bit of an eye on Jack and Harry and what they've been doing and They've been having a good run, you know, whether it's stuff that they've written or stuff that they've been creatively involved in or producing. Um, they, they've, they're, I feel like they're on a purple patch. And uh, I I think when it first came my way, there was only maybe episodes one to three. Um, maybe then I spoke to them after one to three. Then they let me read four. And then we went to work. Like, it was crazy because then... Four and five, uh, five and six weren't written, fully written until we were out in Australia shooting. So, and they changed, you know, and, and they changed a lot in some ways. But, um, and we did, you know, we did a couple of alternate endings and we, uh, we played around with stuff, but uh, that was enough to know to, that it was something I wanted to be involved in. It was, um, I feel like there was just so much going on and so many exciting and unexpected twists along the way um things for me to to grab a hold of uh, as an actor that i was i was in what was it like to finally read that last script once it was finished and learned where you would leave things well i was i've never i don't think i've ever worked harder in my life than i have on on this job and it was like the longest shoot i've ever done and the hardest shoot for physically, mentally, so many reasons. My character's never in some calm state. You know, it's yeah. never an easy day at work. You know, it's always just mad state of flux that he was in. Um, but I, uh, as a result of just constantly working, and I had so few days off, um, when six came in, finished, it took me a while to get to it, to be able to <laughs> find the time. Cause I'm also coming home to, you know, three kids and, you know, the madness of home life and they were all out there with me. And so it was, you know, my weekends were insane as well as, as my weekdays when I was working, you know, so I took it, I, I, I read six probably later than certainly later than Danielle McDonald. Cause she, <laughs> what, she texts me going like, Oh my God, have you read six? And I was like, no, <laughs> she was like, please read it, please read it and get back to me. And I was like, okay. Um, and then it probably took me another week before I even got to reading it, to be honest. But um, yeah, just um, like every other episode, unexpected. Um, uh, but but I loved it and I, and I kind of, you know, we were only ever, we were only ever making one of these. You know, it was only ever like, let's just do one series and, you know, that remains the, the the setup, but I know there's, I know there's certainly when UK and Ireland and Australia and anywhere that's seen it, and the reception's been so insane. There's definitely a, a demand and a want for more. So we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Did he ultimately turn out to be anything that you thought he would be from reading those first three scripts? You know, I think you always have a bit of an idea of what you're going to do with the character or, or how the character is going to be portrayed or, or um, 
how he's going to land with people. And then ultimately, there's so many mitigating factors that, that alter that, you know. Um, and I think probably for the man more than any other character, like he ended up becoming something just other maybe than I expected him to be. And I felt, um, this sounds so silly based on the premise of the show, but I felt like I was constantly finding <laughs> new stuff about him because I was, you know, and that was my process for this character, which is different to any process I've ever done for any character I've ever played. It's like mm-hmm. trying to, trying to block out anything that was revealed about him so that it felt fresh. And as a result, I felt like he kept changing and in in my mind and in my portrayal of him kept altering as the information was given to me, you know, which is unlike anything else I've done before, you know. So, um, yeah, I think the audience go on this crazy ride of discovery with him. Some of it really funny and interesting and much of it dark, you know, um, so that it was never a dull moment. You had Belfast and, and Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar both come out the same year last year. People loved both of those movies, even though they couldn't be more different from each other. So how do you feel about the responses you've heard from fans when it comes to those projects? Are you surprised that people reacted to them the way that they did? Yeah, I mean, I probably haven't done a deep, deep dive into the proper sort of fan reaction to them. But like, I know on a general level that there's a lot of love. I, you know, critically, we got a lot of love, obviously, for both those films. Um, and it's a cool thing when they're so different and you've offered up a very different side of yourself uh, to both be received in that way. It's satisfying. It's cool. You know, it's 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 what you want. You want to constantly be mixing it up and changing people's perception and idea of you as an actor, I think. Um, so it's been it's been a good thing. And then, you know, so far, don't know what it's like in the States yet, but in the UK and Ireland and Australia and everything, the reception to the tourist has been so off the charts great that it's like, it's 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 the first time in my career I've been sitting here with three movies or three projects in a row that have been received this well. <laughs> so I'm just trying to enjoy that. Uh, I know it's not always the way of it, um, but I will I will lap it up and I'll enjoy it whilst it, whilst it remains, you know, it's, uh, it's been cool. And again, the tourist is something totally different again, altogether. And, and I, and I love that. And I want to keep doing that. You know, I want that to be my career. I want to constantly be playing with people's idea of, of, of who they think I am. You know, that's exciting to me. How does that affect the next choice? I mean, how, what what goes into the thinking of like what you're working on now? How did you come to deciding that that would be the next project? It's just a challenge. It's, it's simply that. It's always like, what's a challenge? What 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 you know? You can never predict where your head is going to be in a year, two years, three years. So you can never be like, I've always said this. You cannot plan in this industry. You can't. No matter who you are, what's offered to you, or you know whether you have can't get an audition for two years or whether you're being offered every single job in the world for your career, you can't really plan in a big way because you can you you can change. You can go, well, I've just had this experience on this job and it's made me feel like the next thing I want to do is this or the next thing I want to do that. And you don't know how that's going to be until the experience has happened. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel very lucky, always have for the last 10 years, let's say that I've had a choice in, in what I do. And I want to make the most of that choice. And um, I have uh, the next thing I'm doing this Heart of Stone for Netflix is is like a very different world than I've been in before. Uh, just as Barb and Star was a very different world and Belfast and Paris is a million different worlds than I've been in before. So that's exciting to me, you know, and I want to keep mixing it up and working with cool people. That, that 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 will challenge me um so yeah i th- i feel that that's how i've ended up doing what i'm what i'm doing next and you know uh i i have a pretty good idea of what i'm doing as much as i said i don't want to plan you, you can't plan <laughs> i'm trying to only because i've written something as well that that that, that is in 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 my future of uh making that so 
again, that's a million miles away from everything I've done. So like just t- constantly trying to mix it up and challenge yourself, I guess, is, is, is what leads you to these these choices. Well, thank you for talking to me about it. And thank you for keeping me on my toes because now I'm at the point where I have no idea what you're going to be in next or who the character is going to be. And I love that as a viewer. So thank you. Thanks, Christina. Thank you.